We are Team Shape Memory Polymer, or SMP for short. My name is Emily Dunn. My name is Mr. Dinkadir. I'm Dave Newton. My name is Dara Simpson. I'm Hannah Walston. My name is Eric Weinhold. We're studying light activated shape memory polymers for muscle actuation. We're building strips of SNPs for inclusion in a prosthetic arm. When activated by application of the appropriate wavelength of light, the strips bend, facilitating the bending of an elbow joint. Okay, so in this one we have the magnesium straps versus the shape memory polymer segment. Um, it obviously starts out super high at a very small thickness, but it drops off pretty quickly. So I think it's pretty reasonable to think that as long as we're you know, above 0.1 centimeters, we should be all right on that, right? Right, right. What about the fatigue like? What do you think about that one? You can clearly see a huge rise after about 0.2 centimeters thick, uh, but of course those are based on the, on the other corrections. Um, you should probably follow the, the Smith Watson Topper correction because that's the most conservative. Um, so according to that, probably about 0.2 centimeters would be good too. Okay, maybe we should build in a little bit of extra just in case. Optimal sizing and design of an SMP sheet was based on dimensions of an average human arm, with each arm component being represented as a tapered hollow cylinder as seen. The torque calculations were based on a typical prosthetic material, high density polypropylene. We used this information to find the bending moment exerted by the forearm and hand about the elbow joint. We balanced the torques as shown in the diagram in order to calculate the needed strength of the polymer, which was then used to calculate the necessary volume. We used Autodesk Simulation Multiphysics to perform the structural and fatigue analysis of our SMP strips. The CAD model portrays all four strips together, while the stress and fatigue calculations were performed on a single strip for simplicity. A 3D prosthetic arm with a pin segment was modeled in Autodesk Inventor. The joint of the upper and forearms was cut to make a flat surface on which to mount the SMP assembly. This provided the largest area for the SMP strips we are designing. Our maximal dimensions are 4.5 by 0.75 by 0.25 centimeters for a total volume of 0.84 centimeters cubed. As shown, there are four sheets joined together to provide the necessary force at the point of application. We then performed several tests on simulations of our SMP strip. The von Mises stress is a parameter usually used for this type of ductile material to predict an equivalent stress at which we can expect the material to yield. Our simulations show that the maximum stress is concentrated near the constrained pin and decreases along the arc length, as shown by the range of color in the image. This test suggested that plastic yielding would not occur within the calculated weight load for our application, the prosthetic arm. Finally, we performed fatigue life simulations to figure out the number of cycles under which this SMP strip could perform. We utilized multiple calculation methods, the normal, the Morrow correction, and the Smith-Watson Topper correction in determining cycles to failure. The image shown is based on the Morrow mean correction and found a possible 2.951 times 10 to the 14th cycles, but our lowest value calculated was with the Smith-Watson Topper correction, which found 1.16 times 10 to the 13th cycles. We set a desired number of cycles at 10 to the 5th and found that no matter which calculation method we used, we can still anticipate a lifetime well above our desired amount. Our synthesis was a 21-hour procedure. After initially dissolving 2-hydroxyethyl acrylate in diethyl ether, we added cinnamoyl chloride to the mixture while stirring. Triethylamine was added slowly and the mixture was stirred under reflux for 3 hours and then 18 hours at room temperature. At this point, we obtained a suspension. The suspension was vacuum filtered and the ether evaporated from the filtrate by use of a rotary vacuum evaporator. The resulting material was then dissolved in toluene and rinsed, once with hydrochloric acid and twice with deionized water. We performed the synthesis twice. In the first trial, the toluene was evaporated from the resulting material using a motorized vacuum rotary evaporator, while the other was evaporated by vacuum distillation when the rotovap was unavailable. We then grafted a polymer network from our synthesized cinnamic acid. This was done by mixing butyl acrylate, hydroxyethyl acrylate cinnamic acid, hydroxyethyl methacrylate, polypropylene glycol, and azoisobutyrone nitrile. We then filled a mold with our solution and put it in a grafting press and heated to 80 degrees Celsius for 18 hours. Once the free radical polymerization was complete, it was removed and rinsed with hexane and chloroform to remove any unreacted monomers. We used a dynamic mechanical analyzer, commonly known as a DMA, to characterize our azobenzene. We see that the yield strength uh, from our DMA results is about 20 
for mega pascals, which is a little bit less than the theoretical of 54, but it's still in the same range. Um, and also you can see a nice uh, linear uh, relation in which we calculated uh, Jones modulus of 600 or 763 megapascals, which again is lower than the 990 megapascals, but still is, is in the range. So do you think that this is enough of the DMA, or do you think that we should probably try to run another trial? Uh, it'd be nice if we could run another trial, but seeing as how we're sort of out of time, it would be nice to see different strain rates and see how that affects the uh, yield strength and the elastic modulus. But the linear results show that we got a pretty good result for this run of the event. We did try several strain rates, and this one came out pretty bad to the actual results. Right. Compared to some of the other tests that we ran, this one came out pretty smooth. We 